Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today we're checking out the brand new GameHub v4.1.3 update for Android, and I'll also be testing GTA 5 performance on it to see how well it runs now. If you're someone who loves playing PC games on your phone, this update brings some really exciting stuff, especially for users with Mali GPUs, and even for those who use Bluetooth controllers. So let's get started. The new GameHub v4.1.3 update brings several big improvements in one shot. The cloud gaming feature has been upgraded for faster AAA games game streaming, the UI and settings are now much cleaner, and most importantly, Mali GPU support is fully unlocked, allowing PC emulators to work smoothly on many more Android phones. Add to that the seamless controller pairing, plus overall bug fixes and performance optimizations, and you've got one of the most solid game hub updates so far. Now let me walk you through how I tested GTA 5 on this new version. First, open the game hub emulator and log in with your Google account. It's completely safe and there are no issues with login. Once you're on the home screen, go to the My section, then tap on import PC game. From there, locate your GTA 5 folder and select the GTA 5 launcher.exe file. This will start installing the required firmware and emulator tools. Once the installation is complete, go back to the game and tap on the three dots to open game settings. In the general settings, you don't need to touch anything. It's already optimized. In the compatibility settings, here's what I recommend. If you're using a Mali or MediaTek device, choose system driver. But if you're using a Snapdragon device, like me, select the latest turnip driver. For the DX DXVK version, I used DXVK 1.10.3 Async. For CPU Translator, I picked Box64 version 0.28, and for VRAM Limit, set it to 1 GB. This fixed the issue where the game used to get stuck for me. After the settings are done, go back and click on the GTA 5 icon to launch the game. Once it opens, press the back button and enable full screen mode. You'll now see a new performance overlay in the corner. It looks great, takes up less space, and is easy to read during gameplay. So how's the performance? I'm using a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 device, and GTA 5 ran really well at first. My first mission started at around 40 FPS, which is solid. After a few minutes, I added save data to skip missions and unlocked the open world. In free roam, I was getting around 25 to 30 FPS, and during intense scenes like driving or gunfights, it dropped slightly to 20-25 FPS. Interestingly, when this emulator was first released, I used to get around 35 to 40 FPS even in heavy areas. So I'm not sure what's changed. Maybe it's the new backend or GPU driver behavior. I'll be testing GTA 5 on Mali and MediaTek devices in my next video, so make sure to hit the like button and help me reach our 150 likes goal if you want to see that. And hey, check this guy on YouTube playing NFS Most Wanted 2012 on a Dimensity 9000 Mali G710, and he's getting very good performance without any graphical glitches. So yeah, things are improving fast, and I'm really excited to test GTA 5 on Mali and MediaTek chips next. Stay tuned, because that video is coming soon. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Creative gamers for more emulator tutorials, performance tests, and game setup guides. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.